Morning everybody. Sorry we didn't do a vlog last week. Um, been really busy, but today uh, I'm going to show you why I've been really busy. Uh, it's one of those rare times where I take you to work with me and you can see what I'm doing. Uh, if you look back in the previous videos, you'll see me messing about at Liverpool with big ships and docks and things like that. And you'll see me in Derbyshire working with two cranes lifting big heavy machines into position. Uh, today I'm going to show you something completely different. Um, I've had a couple of jobs in my life, uh, British Army, Parachute Regiment. So yeah, I was a soldier for a long time and uh, I've also been an engineer. Before I got into engineering management, construction management, uh, I was an engineer. Uh, I worked with a particular company for about three years and they've asked me to go back and help them with a project they're doing which has gone wrong basically. It's for a very big company, uh, a company that delivers parcels all the way across the UK. I'm not going to give you the name, but you might work it out with the colours and things like that. Um, so it's six o'clock in the morning, Ascension's still snoring in bed. Uh, well, she's got the telly on now and she's watching telly because she does that quite a lot. And um, I'm going to have to go to work. My truck, <laughs> my truck's in the garage. Uh, again, uh, exhaust manifold pretty much fell off this time. This is what you get for buying Ford Rangers. Uh, so they've given me a little tiny black Ford Courier van to run around in. I'm using that at the moment. I'm picking my truck up later, actually, so I'll uh, stick around. And uh, I may show you where that is. And, uh, it's going to be sat there looking all sorry for itself. I've asked them to do the repairs, I've asked them to put new brakes on it, wheel speed sensors, give it an MOT, and uh, let's see how it goes now. Well, there you go. Joys of having a Ford Ranger. So yeah, six o'clock in the morning, uh, and I'm going to work. Yeah, lovely life, isn't it? I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Take this camera with me today, I think. Um, here's my little office. Things have changed a little bit um, as we're doing more and more videos. And I'm using Wondershare Film Order to do my editing. I thought I'd buy a couple of monitors. So, I've got monitors. And I bought a new laptop as well. Uh, it's one of those Samsung Galaxy Book 4s. And it's got the... Uh, the Snapdragon processor. Pretty funky to be honest. Bloody quick. Quicker than Intel. Right, what do I need? So I need... Oh, this box right here. Because that's got all my DJI pocket stuff in there. Let's take that. Foggy morning today. Ooh, not good at all. Very foggy. Got a little forward van. Oh dear. Gosh, man, cold as well. See, that doesn't work either. 
Glad the coffee's working. Right. Let's go. One thing I definitely miss about the range out mornings like this is the heated seats. Oh, it's cold in here. Absolutely freezing. So we're in Derby, or Ripley, and I need to go to Non-Eaton today. So that's going to be about an hour's drive. Roughly an hour's drive. So we're going to hit the M1 motorway. And we're going to go. Horrible, foggy morning. But what do you expect? What we in now? September, is it? I don't know. I can't wait till we go to the Philippines. Go and get some sun. But it's lovely over there at the moment. But now we're stuck in cold England on horrible, foggy days. Look at this. Miserable traffic everywhere. Take about 10 minutes for this van to warm up. <coughs> so yeah, I'll go and pick the Ranger up later. I think I'll finish work about 12 o'clock. And then I've got to drive to the garage and go and liberate it. Ascension's going to be happy today because yesterday we decided to buy one of those Ninja air fryers. There's nothing wrong with the air fryer we've got, it's, it's fine. It's just a Kasori one we got off Amazon, they're really good. But uh, Ascension sort of likes the Ninja ones, so I bought one. That should be coming today, that'll keep her happy. Uh, the good news is it's Friday, and I got that Friday feeling. Last day at work, full weekend off. Might even do another blog tomorrow yet. So, uh, we've got directors of this particular company I'm doing work for. They're coming today to watch this new machine. And uh, my job's to get it working. And then if they're happy with it, which they should be, they're gonna sign a bit of paper and it's officially signed off and bought. So that is my job today. It's, uh, it's gonna be a strange one. But I thought I'd take you with me because I like to do that now and again take you with me to work and see what I get up to. Um, right, I'm going to stop talking for a bit and concentrate on this shitty, foggy road until I get to the motorway. I've been driving for about five minutes now. Ripley's not far away from the M1 motorway. We're sort of like Junction 26, Nottingham, so midway up the country. At least the van's getting warm. Uh, this time in the morning I like to play a little game called Bell End Spotting uh, or Spot the Bell End because you can guarantee you're driving along under the speed limit trying to get to work nice and safe especially on mornings like this and you'll always get a Bell End generally driving a Mercedes or a BMW you know the sort of car I mean really new, very shiny, very sporty um, the one with the design issue where the, uh, the indicators never work on them and uh, they just have a problem with the gears, they're either flat out fast or stops. So yeah, you get lots of bell ends at this time in the morning. I don't know why they're all racing, racing to get to work. I certainly am not racing to get to work on the morning. I'd rather get there in one piece. Like for instance, the other day we had a, a white BMW and he undercut me from the left hand side and man, I don't even know what's going through these people's minds at this time in the morning when they're driving like that. Absolutely mental. They're going to kill themselves, but they're going to kill somebody else as well. I mean, what's wrong with them? Just, they buy a, a powerful car like a, I don't know, like a, a BMW M. M4, and then they drive it like a complete bell end. It's just, it's beyond me. Right, here's the signs. We're at junction 26 now, the M1. Uh, hope there's not a lot of traffic today. It generally take me an hour to get to 
on Eton, which is where I've been working for the last few weeks. But if the traffic's bad, it could be an hour and a half. Ugh. Then I've got this shitty little van to drive in. No heated seats. It rattles, it's noisy. It's, uh, it's just a little loner that Steve from the garage gave me to run around in. It's something like a 69 plate, so it's, what does that make it? 2020? 2019? black and it looks really nice on the outside but you open the back doors and he's used it to to uh, deliver engines pick engines up so it's absolutely flooded with oil everything's dented where the engine's been rolling around in the back he's not even fastened it in it's completely destroyed it <laughs> oh good old steve more money than sense oh here we go we're on the m1 it doesn't look too bad this morning Got a bit of a sniffy cold as well. That's not good, is it? I don't like being ill. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit quieter this morning at this time. Sit down, 6.25 in the morning. So, I'm going to head south. I'm going to get off at Leicester. Head down the M69. And then jump onto the M6. And then we should be at Nuneaton by, uh, I don't know, probably about half past seven time. The thing is at the moment, which makes it a little bit worse, I can't have the radio on when I'm blogging because we'll get copyright strikes. We will. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop this vlog about now. Spark up another fag, put the radio on, drink some of this nice coffee that Ascension makes me every morning, and then I'm going to start vlogging again when I get to Nuneaton. I really hope I don't bore you too much today, I'm just going to rattle on, keep talking, and uh, show you what I do. Not an interesting job really. Uh, the funny thing is that uh, the company I'm working for at the moment, or contracting for, is somebody I used to work for. Uh, I had a massive argument with the MD five years ago, and that prompted me to start my own business. Um, but, but since uh, myself and Ascension have been together, she's made me see that chasing money all the time, and chasing contracts, it's not always a good thing. I've got to the point now where work's just ruled my life. I'm, I'm just working. I don't want to take a week off because obviously if I'm charging, like I am today, £400 a day to go to these jobs, once you've took a week off for an holiday, that's like a grand, isn't it? You know, well, £1,500 you're losing every week. And if you get sick, again, you're losing £1,500 a week. So, she made me think, maybe I should stop running my own business and go and work for a company again. So, for the last uh, the last few months, I've actually been looking around at different companies. Now, the company I'm working for at the minute, LAC they're called, they're a, a conveyor and automation company based in Nottingham. Really good one. Um, they've said, look, do you want to come back and work for us? We'll give you a contract. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I've negotiated a yearly salary, and I've pushed me luck a bit, and I've said, look, you know, I don't want a van. Uh, get me a Ford Ranger, but I want a new one. They've gone, yeah, okay. Well, all right then. Uh, so, yeah, seriously contemplating going back to work for LAC again. After a, a break of nearly five years. <coughs> so, yeah, that's my life. At least when I go on holiday then to the Philippines with Ascension, I'll get to, I'll get paid for it. And if I get sick, which I, I don't really ever get sick, um, I'll get paid for that too. And they'll pay some of my pension. And it's a steady wage coming in each week. So it's got its, it's, got its positives, hasn't it, really? 
roadworks again. Look at this. One lane closed. Down to 50 mile an hour. Speed cameras everywhere. It's no fun driving anymore, is it? These speed cameras, I'll tell you what. Is there actually anybody in the country that doesn't have any points on the licence? You do like 53 in a 50 zone and the camera flashes and that's it, you've got points. Your insurance goes up. Uh, it's like a money making scheme for the government. Yeah, I know you shouldn't be going over the speed limit, but sometimes it's easy just to follow the car in front and keep that distance, like I'm doing behind this one. And then before you know it, he's speeding and you've not looked at your speedometer and you're speeding. And then the next thing you see a flash. Uh, it's crazy. Alright, I'm going to stop banging on for a bit and uh, just concentrate on driving and drink my coffee. I'll talk to you in a bit, fellas. Okay, time check, 7 o'clock. I'm at junction 21 on the M1. This is where we normally get a bit of traffic. And coming off at Leicester, jumping on the 69 towards Warwickshire, and ultimately Nuneaton. Not spotted any bell ends this morning, which uh, is bloody surprising to be honest, but there's still time. Quite impressed with this little van as much as I'm slating it off. Um, it's got a whole 1.5 litre engine. Wow, it's a diesel. Uh, but it's missing one piston, it's only got three cylinders. But, again, it's doing 62 miles to the gallon. Can't complain at that. I'm lucky if I get 26 miles to the gallon out of my little Ranger. So yeah, nippy little van to be honest. Secretly I quite like it. I think it's quite nice. It's just a shame that Steve's let it go by putting dirty engines in the back and denting all the back end up in it. Right, down to the traffic islands, and then we'll be on the M69. Not a bad run this morning. I like driving um, early mornings. I prefer it, to be honest. It's not as good as driving at night. I like driving at night even better. It's good. Plenty of coffee, thanks to Ascension. She always looks after me with coffee. Uh, just no bell ends this morning, don't know what's going on. Don't know what's going on at all. People drive like the madmen early mornings. I used to be the same when I got me uh, the AMG Mercedes, me supercharged Range Rovers and things like that. I'm still a little bit like that in the Audi. I take the Audi out to be fair because it's fun. But I think as you get older, and you um, you slow down a bit. Can't really be a boy racer at 57 year old now, can I? It's nice to do now and again. I just don't understand why these people drive like that. It's because they're not just going to hurt themselves, they're going to hurt other people as well. Which is completely mental. And I think I'd be well pissed off if somebody hit this van or my Ranger on a, on a morning because I was driving like a bellend. In fact, I'd be very pissed off. But I'd also be laughing at them because <laughs> if they hit my Ranger, what well, good luck to them. I know it would come off best and uh, it wouldn't be them. If you want to plough into a five metre long two and a half ton pickup truck and just lift it up four inches, get on with it. Um, it's not going to hurt me so much. Yeah, so the M69 is not bad either. Uh, here I am, cruising on at a steady 80, <coughs> 69 miles an hour in this little three cylinder diesel van. And it's behaving itself. Ascension's going to be in a really good mood today. As I said, we've got the uh, the Ninja Air Fryer coming today. 
Um, Warren at work, one of the lads that's working for me at the moment, one of the fitters, uh, he just bought one and uh, he says they're really good. So uh, yeah, we've, uh, we hit the button on Amazon last night and uh, we got one. Also, Ascension's going for a hair done today. She's going to the hairdressers. Now, one thing with Ascension, she is the sweetest girl you'll ever meet. And uh, she will do more for anybody than she will do for herself. You know, at the moment, she's uh, she's sending what they call ballot buying boxes over to the Philippines to a family. A ballot buying box is literally a massive cardboard box and you put things in it and then you pay and it gets shipped over to whoever you wanted to get shipped to. And she's not just filled one big box up, and, and I mean these boxes, you can put a washing machine in them, they're, they're that big. She's done four. She's sending expensive handbags, shoes, coffee, things for mum, things for the sisters and brothers, clothes, food, silly things like mustard and things that they can't get over there, uh, Marmite and Horlicks. So yeah, she, she's she's absolutely selfless, and uh, she colours her own hair and, and things like that, but she doesn't spend anything on herself, and she's on about hairdressers, and I said, babe, I said, just book into hairdressers, get yourself, uh, get yourself booked in, get your hair done, treat yourself. No, babe, she's going, it's like £100, sod it. Look, I'm working hard for things like this. Go and spend the hundred pounds. Go and get your hair done. <laughs> she, she really doesn't like spending money on herself. She'd rather spend it on everybody else and, and look after everybody else. I suppose that's what makes her such a good nurse. Um, she has that caring nature, you know. She she puts everybody else in front of herself. That's why I love her so much. Well, apart from other things, you know. I mean, if you'd have said to me two years ago that, you know, I'd, I'd find this, this lovely Filipino lady and, you know, we'd get together and we'd get married and things, I'd have, I'd have thought you were talking shit, basically. It's, it's strange how life creeps up and bites you in the ass, isn't it? You know, but we're together, I love her so much, she's, she's more to me than anything, that girl. And uh, I am so... So privileged to have such a selfless, caring partner. I never thought I'd be this happy in my life. And I know, yeah, I'm, I'm a grumpy Yorkshireman, I'm a, I'm a grumpy bastard, I'm moody, I make mistakes, you know, I'm, I'm self censored at times, full of myself. <laughs> That's me. Uh, I don't deserve a girl like Ascension. But, uh, I don't know. I must have done something right in my life, eh? Right, that's enough of me talking shit. Uh, I'm just going to carry on driving. It is now five past seven, and I should be there for about half past or twenty to eight. All right, quarter past seven. I'm on the M6 now. To be fair, this is not bad either, because generally the M6 is a uh, <laughs> normally shit. Um, I'm about seven miles away from Coventry, and probably five or ten minutes away from where I'm going. Still foggy. Still foggy. I'll show you. Not too bad. And surprisingly, no bell ends this morning whatsoever. This is too good to be true. Everybody's behaving themselves. Yeah. I think this is my turn, Junction 3. Yeah, Junction 3, that's mine. We're nearly there. to stop talking crap soon and I'll start showing you what I want to show you today. As I said, the, uh, 
I've told you LAC are the people I'm working for um, I can't really tell you the, who the client is but you're going to work it out quite easily I should imagine um, what LAC do they put brand new sorting equipment into uh, parcel distribution companies like Amazon's, DHL, DPD, Hermes, Every, and uh, they make and fit all this uh, equipment which sorts out parcels and letters and boxes and um, that's what I used to install. I used to manage installations of this stuff about five years ago. So they've, uh, they've asked me to go to this particular installation which they're having problems with and uh, work as an engineer and a manager to get things sorted out to make it work because it wasn't working, it wasn't right and that's what I've been doing for the last three weeks four weeks, five weeks even, not, not three weeks, my god time's flying um, so today is the day that the directors of this company come and watch the machine work and if everything works right they'll sign on the dotted line and everybody gets paid yeah but I'm nearly there right spotted a McDonald's I think I'll be going there for breakfast later on there's no point bringing sandwiches today because I'm going to leave at 12 o'clock and pick up my truck take this little van back it looks like I've arrived as usual I'm going to be the first one here I'm always the first here Morning mate. That's it, let's park up at Dock 27. Another day in paradise. We've arrived. It's 22 minutes past seven. I want a bad run to be honest. Can't remember what time I set off. Was it six o'clock or just after six? So, uh, my boys will be here for about eight o'clock and uh, it's all going to kick off later. We'll have 25 Indian lads running around loading parcels and programming engineers making sure the machine's programs are right, electricians running around the place making sure all the sensors are right and the electrics are right, my mechanical guys making sure everything's mechanically right and then we're going to put about 150,000 parcels through it and we're going to hope that we can meet the contract um, of 7,000 parcels an hour. 7,000 an hour we need to be able to feed through this machine to prove uh, that it works properly. And uh, no pressure, directors on site today and all the top knobs from this company. So no pressure whatsoever, <laughs> but it's my job to make it happen. Right, that's it, I'm going in. Horrible foggy morning. There's a little van. It's not bad. It looks great from the outside. I'd probably buy it if it weren't for this. I mean, look, 69 plate, but <laughs> I can't even get in the back. Oh well. Anyway, it's full of oil and it's horrible. Let's go and have a look at the job. Getting tired of seeing this place. There we go. It's like I'm the first one here.
this is my machine you've got loading docks this is where the big HGV lorries back up to these big long blue things here these are called Sovex belts and what happens that door will lift up the lorry will back up and open its back door and you push a button on the end of this and this whole bit extends it goes right through that door right into the back of the lorry and I think we've got five of these at the moment yeah the whole the whole thing extends it goes right out through that door right to the back of the truck and then things go up the conveyor onto my equipment so my equipment starts there and then works its way all the way through the system so this is where your parcels will come in off trucks and somebody will stand here and they'll load everything onto these belts and away they go up there and they work the way around all the way around the system love these automatic lights it's nice and quiet here this time in the morning I like it like this a lot of rubbish around at the moment because we haven't tidied up so that's where your parcels come up now these are called merge belts or finger merges so your parcels come in and they'll sit there and when there's a gap in parcels coming down here gap 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 this will shoot and it'll put a parcel on and take it away so you've got five of these merge belts part of the programmer um, job is to make sure that the gaps are right of each parcel now we was having a problem merging parcels and they were coming in and, and hanging just there they weren't coming all the way across to the middle of the belt so what I've done I put a really smooth belt on here all these white belts are really really slippery so as these belts are moving at 108 meters a minute these are running at 136 meters a minute and they just inject parcels inject 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 until you've got a good run of parcels and then everything hits this little thing that I've designed and made called a wedge merge so it brings everything from that side to a central location on the belt so when everything gets onto here it's going to be in the middle uniform with gaps goes around the corner into this this is an MBS diverter system so as things go in here you've got little blue belts that trigger and then move left so things that go in straight forward go straight forward anything that's too big which these uh, little yellow sensors in here determine from the time it passes here to there it'll measure the length of the parcel if it's too big these little blue belts trigger and it sends things left reject if you want like a reject shoot and it sends it left down this slide which you'd probably pay about a pound to ride on if you was at a fun fair and it goes down those belts and it gets put in a basket and it gets refed back through again over there where it says the XPD that's a laser scanner what actually happens there is uh, there's a lot of laser beams and they scan the parcel barcodes as it goes through and it tells the next bit of equipment which is the sorter that thing with loads of baskets which basket the parcel has to go into so it goes up the belt and then it will shoot it off into one of the baskets either that side or, or over the other side and those baskets go to other depots 
So that's how your parcels come from a main depot through this system. That machine tells them where they're going and they get diverted into other baskets and they go into different lorries to different depots. That's how this company does things so quickly and so well due to our machines. Pretty cool really isn't it? Are you getting bored yet? Hey, so much junk up here. Got to get the guys to have a good clean up. But we've still got pieces missing right from there and there and there. They get delivered today. This is called a, a merge conveyor. So things that come down there, these are powered, these roll. And things that come down here, that rolls and that merges onto here. You'll see it all working later on. You'll see it all work. That's a German machine. That's made by Bormer. I was going to go and work for Bormer um, a few weeks ago, but I decided to turn them down. There's a control panel over there. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hey, what an interesting life I've got. As usual, I've got to have an office. <laughs> and I've made my own little office here at the moment. It's just temporary. And this is it. This is my little office. Got to put my IVs on today. My little toolbox. My plans, my drawings and rest of the garbage that goes with it. Right, um, time for another coffee I think, another quick fag and then uh, I'll start fitting some parts. I've had these parts made at the moment. This needs to be fitted this morning. It's a diverter plate which goes on the top of that diverter I've just shown you with the blue belts. Parcels were snagging on it, so I've had this one made. And we're going to fit that in a bit. Not got much battery left at the moment, but luckily we've got the extended battery that comes with the uh, the DJI. So if I plug that on the back of the camera, that should give me full charge again. Plenty of tools. Most important tool is this, because that keeps me fueled up with coffee. Definitely the most important jewel on the job. Besides this tool, uh, so I'm going to plug this uh, plug this battery in and give myself some more charge. Okay, right. So they've sent me parts. We've counted some goals, but no bolts to go in them. this is to replace this which looks like a bag of shit basically so I'm going to swap that out because what's happening is things are coming down here to the diverter and they're getting caught and snagged up on that which is basically shit so let's change that out All right. That's that bag of shit removed. Do you know you like solvents or anything? Any what? Solvents. Right. Someone stuck that No. Can you see that it's fine? Don't have any. That's, uh, that's Jack. That's our PLC engineer. Uh, right, so that's a bit I've taken off. That's a bit that's going on. I wonder if it's going to fit. Hmm, maybe. Yeah, I don't look bad. I'll bolt it on. Can't beat a bit of weather tools. German. Everything is weather. I love my kit. It's like women with handbags and boots and shoes, but when you're man shopping, it's always about tools. 
Seems to be better. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that'll do it. What we got over there then? Oh, all the Indians are turning up. So the people in the orange are supervisors, the people in green are parcel loaders. There's my two lads over there on the mezzanine floor fixing shit. And I wish that control panel would shut up. It's because I've got this uh, this gate open and it's got a switch on the handle that stops the machinery when you open it. Right, let's get all this shit back down to my little desk and uh, let's see what's happening. See if I can shut this alarm off. Control panel. Request gate lock. Needs a password, obviously. Good job, I know it. Log in. Request gate lock. Reset. Yeah, that's it, sorted. Gotta get noisy soon, because everybody's here now. Peace and quiet's been shattered. There we go, look, shouted orders out. There we go. Soon it's gonna get really noisy. Let's go and see what my boys are doing. Jack's messing about the panels over there. Cleaning them, wow. That's only because directors are coming today. All these new white belts I, I put on yesterday. We're gonna see, at the same time, you and me, just how much difference they've made when we put parcels down later. But they're looking good. This is the bit where I introduce you to my boys. This down here is Bailey. Extremely great fitter for a young man. Uh, he's got the worst ass on the planet, farts a lot. But you know what, we, uh, we can deal with it. But uh, yeah, very skilled young fella. This over here, this is Warren. Warren's got the best hair on the job. Very shy person Sc though. Scraggiest hair. Scraggiest hair on the job. He likes a bit of bagging and screwing, does I was. <laughs> <laughs> He's on it. So these are the uh, so these are the boys. That's my crew. The crew of two. I see the old Indians are getting restless. Uh, there's a lot of turbans on the job today. <laughs> Get a bit of jaldy jaldy going on. Right, I'm gonna stop the vlog now and then get back to you in a bit. Bye. Right, half past nine. This thing is getting a bit hectic now. So I've got a meeting. Things are starting to go up the belts. Loads of parcels arriving. Little Indians everywhere. There's a programmer. Yeah, loads going up. Hive of activity at the moment. Here's boss man. Telling everybody what to do. So this is what happens to your parcels. They're coming in boxes. They've got these conveyors and then they come out the other end into other boxes to be delivered to local depots. I just need to make sure that this is all working well this morning. Let me go and get on this meeting, I'll come back and make a proper video. 
Alright guys, it's going to get a bit noisy now, but I think we're on it. I think. I think find out. The canting parcels. Five in feeds on the go at the moment. All the Indians are going for it. Busy, busy. Morning, boss. This is boss man. He's looking after things. He's the main man on the job. He tells yeah. all these guys what to do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I yeah, do very well. Very, very well. Yeah. Well done, boss man. Carry on, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Boss man looks after everything. Let's go and have a look up top. So, just in case you ever wonder what it's like in a parcel sortation depot, now you know. I want to see what difference these white belts have made. Keep everything centralised. Trying to slide things into gaps at the moment. There we go, that's a good one. And another one. Parcel will wait and then it'll just drop into line. Lovely. Nice gaps. And we're trying to do 7,000 an hour, which this machine's quite capable of now it's uh, set up properly. going to refeed everything that's coming off the sorter down there. It's all dropping into baskets. And these down here are the rejects. So yeah, looking very, very good at the moment. Very happy with it. This is a little wedge merge that I made. It just moves everything from the side of the belt over to the middle. That's working quite well. this corner is the diverter so when the sensor detects something's too big it'll divert off that silver bed and go left just like that There's Ben, the electrician. Good morning, Ben. Ben and Fernando, Holloway's finest. Good morning. <laughs> He's from Spain. I don't know where Ben's from. I think he was hatched. <laughs> yeah, I got the last one. Everything's good. Well, I've got the diverter. Everything seems to be running nicely at the moment. Converting well. Yeah, 
they're really happy with that. I like it when everything runs properly. Plenty of gaps between the parcels. These little belts here, there's two or three together. You'll notice parcels coming in close together, but this parcel, when it detects us too close together, this belt will speed up faster and it creates a gap. So like a variable, sorry, variable speed belt. You'll just see it shoot off a bit quicker sometimes. This increases the gaps. Right, so that's the infeed side. So you've got five inducts and five incline conveyors going through five mergers onto one bigger way belt, through a guide, through a diverter, and now I'll, I'll show you the scanner. This is the control panel. So we have something here called a HMI, or a Human Machine Interface. And what that will show you is the machine. It shows you all the conveyor belts, green means they're working, white means a sensor's detected a parcel, and if there's a problem, it'll go red, and it'll tell me exactly where the problem is. So when I find the problem, I look on the monitors, and I can see for myself what the problem is. We need to be looking at this machine up here now, this interesting looking machine. So the parcels, come past the diverter, and they go into this little baby. This is the XPD scanner. And what those red lines are doing over there, they're reading the barcode on every single parcel that comes through. The little screen there tells you the weights, the dimensions, how long we are. It even weighs the parcel because this belt here is on weigh cells. It'll tell you the weight of the parcel. So every one of those parcels going through at high speed, that's 7,000 parcels an hour, are getting red. The scanner is scanning the barcode and telling it where it needs to go. And further up the belt, you'll see it's ejecting parcels left or right into baskets. And each of those baskets go to a different depot in the UK. And that's working really well. So that is a scanner. go in here, this is what they call an interlock gate. If I open that handle, the machine will stop. It's a safety uh, feature. The thing you can see on your left is called a merge conveyor. It's the same as the ones you saw earlier. This one now is going to wait for a gap in the mainstream of parcels. When it finds a gap, it will inject a parcel like that. Again, the trick is getting a good gap and injecting the parcel at the right time. I hope you're having fun so far today. This is me and my serious side now. This is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's looking really good. the sorter. We've gone past the scanner and we're on the sorter. This is a German one, it's made by a company called Bormer. So everything's running, it's been scanned, every parcel's been scanned, it knows where it needs to go into each of these baskets and the machine will automatically throw the parcels into the baskets. So for instance, 
course, this basket here might be going to Hemel Hempstead. So we're automatically sorting the parcels for Hemel Hempstead into this one. Every one of these baskets will be going somewhere else in the UK. And that's part of the sortation. It's all looking very well. Quite happy with it. That's a miracle of modern automation. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the video here for now. You've seen what goes on. I've walked you around the, uh, the sorting depot. So the next time you send uh, a parcel by this brand, I think you might have worked out who it is now. You know that it's in good hands. You know how it works. You know how it's sorted. Um, I'm going to go and pick my car up, or my truck up in a bit, so I'll be leaving here at 12. At the moment it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, and everything's going very well, so I'll talk to you in a bit. Two hours later. Right, that's me finished for the day. It's now 12 o'clock, and it's time to go and get that heap of junk pickup truck of mine from the garage and drop this van off. We had a very successful morning and the customer's very happy with the equipment. So uh, I think we had one parcel that jammed up out of all the ones we fed through it, which was six and a half thousand parcels in the time I was videoing. It's not bad going at all, is it? So yeah, goodbye to this job until next Monday. It's time for a weekend off. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's try and spin this camera around. There we go. I'm still getting used to the... Uh, I didn't get me McDonald's either today. I was going to go and have a McDonald's breakfast, but you know what? I didn't get time. Bloody traffic. You know, sometimes it's uh, it's more enjoyable doing this type of work than it is the uh, all-out CDM management work. Because, like this morning, I got to play with spanners for a little bit, and it's. It's nice to get back to what you've done for so many years, you know, installing things and being technical. And it helps when you've got guys like Bailey and, and Warren working under you. Young lads, they're keen to learn, the good lads. You know, it's very hard to find decent young engineers these days. So it's, it's nice that I've got them pair. Uh, they go a long way, them. They'll go a long way. Some people just don't want to work. They do, and they use the brains. They're so smart, you know. It's like working with your own kids, to be honest. <laughs> I sort of look at them in, in some ways. I look at them like my boys, you know, like part of the family. Because they are part of my family while we're working away. They're good lads. So yeah, I've sort of enjoyed it uh, last few weeks working on this uh, this project. LAC are happy. You know, they brought me in to get them over the line, to get it uh, signed off with the customer. And um, I've literally just found out that uh, the customer has signed it off today. He's, uh, he's very happy. He's very happy with the throughput, how much we've put through it. He's happy with the way it's performing. Um, the fact that it's only jammed up once, or one parcel that got stuck in one place out of all that, uh, all that volume, it says a lot about the machine. You know, I'm really happy with that. So, I'm just getting on to the M69, and I'm going to have to try and find my way to Steve's garage, Midland Diesels engines, Midland Diesels, that's it, that's what they call it, and uh, go and retrieve my truck. Hopefully it's all MOT'd and all working nicely. You can have this little van back, which 
I hate to say it, I actually quite like this little van. Um, besides the fact it's a complete shit house in the back where all the oil is and the, the dented up inside uh, where he's had engines rolling around. Do you know what? I'd probably buy one of these because they're so good on fuel. 62 to the gallon. Wow. It's fun. It's a nice little van. It looks great on the outside. It's just it's a shit tip on the inside. Sorry, Steve. Um, so here we are. Yeah, M69. Right, I'll uh, punch the address into the sat nav and uh, I'll pick up again with you guys when I get to my truck. See you in a bit. Right, update. <laughs> 20 past 12. I'm currently on the M1 on the way to Steve's garage to pick the car up. Now bearing in mind, I texted him yesterday to say definitely on for tomorrow, as you stated. I'll be there about 2 o'clock. He's literally just texted me to say uh, it might have to be tomorrow morning now because the car's not been in for its MOT yet. So, that's great, isn't it? I've finished work early and I'm on my way up there and then I find out it's not ready. And then I said, OK, um, I can pick the car up after the MOT later this afternoon. But then he comes back and says, well, I'm still refitting the manifold on the engine. Uh, I thought he'd have had that done. He's had it a week. So he said he'll keep me posted for this afternoon. That's no good, is it? Wait until you're on the way to him. I'm literally 40 minutes away from him. Finish work early. Everything is planned. Then I get to let down. So unreliable. Never answers his phone. Do you know what? If it if it weren't for the fact he's a bloody good mechanic and he knows more about rangers and transit engines than anybody I've ever met in my life, I just wouldn't use him. He's just he's murder trying to get hold of him. Because he's so busy. He's, he's in demand. But you know, it's bloody frustrating. And it all isn't planned out today, right? Let's get this job finished. Go and pick it up. He said, he said Friday. I've left it till two o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, now it's not ready. So I'll be waiting for him now to text me while I'm at home to see if I've got to go and pick it up. Uh, in the meantime, I've been asked to go in tomorrow morning back to where you've just seen today just to fit a couple of uh, side guards that are missing they're getting delivered today so it'd be a couple of hours in the morning so it's not the end of the world it's just it just pissed me off that I've planned things I've agreed things I've planned things and then somebody else has, uh, has just messed my plans up I hate that I really hate that you know not like I'm a control freak or anything but if you tell me my car's ready on Friday then I text you to say, fine, okay, are you sure we're still on for Friday? And you don't reply to me. And then I text you the next day to say, I'll be there for two o'clock, and you don't reply to me. And then you wait until I'm nearly on the way to you, which I am, I'm halfway to him, and then you tell me it's not ready. I'm still putting an exhaust manifold back on it. Bear in mind he's had it since last Wednesday, and it's now like, yeah, he's had it days. That's my rant over. Just a bit pissed off now. As I said, he's a great mechanic and his work's brilliant. Can't fault him. <laughs> I just thought I'd be messed about. Uh, so I suppose I better just go home and uh, wait. See if I've got my car tomorrow or not, or whether I'm still using this little van. It's, it's always something, isn't it? On the plus side, Ascension should have been to the hairdressers by now. So when I get in, I'll see a new uh, blonde highlights or light blonde highlights in a, that dark hair she's got. I wonder how that's going to look. We'll find out together later, shall we? And then we've got an air fryer coming later on, which will probably be, be delivered at the same time as I've got to go out and pick my truck up because that's the way things generally work. 
one thing gets thrown out, it throws everything else out, all your plans get messed up. But I'm not going to talk anymore about that because it'll just get me wound up. Oh well, there we go. See you back home. A few minutes later. Ascension's back yet. That's the post lady. Oh, oh well, that's a short day. So that's it. I think they call it an anti-climax. Do you know when you plan everything out and uh, things just don't go according to plan? And it's normally somebody else's fault. Gets me growling every time. So, I'm going to leave the blog, or the vlog, on this note. You'll have to tune in to the next one to see Ascension's new hairstyle, or new hair colour. Um... The new T-Fell air fryer. Now there's something to get excited about. And the big one. Will I get my Ranger back this afternoon? Hmm. Big question. Thanks for watching. Now you know all about parcel sortation. <laughs> God, that's so corny. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Now it's uh, it's time to get this uploaded. And hopefully I'll get a phone call or a text off Steve saying, come and get your truck. Right. Bye. Bye.